Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I'm gonna share with you my top 10 tips on successfully growing a fall garden and all the things you need to do. So, let's talk about it. So it is fall and it is our time as desert gardeners. It's the happiest time of the year because it's not 118 degrees. So we're excited. <laughs> and this also means that now it is time to grow yourself an amazing garden. And if you have a small space garden like me, try and pack in as many things as humanly possible in order to be able to cut your grocery budget. That's my tip. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. There's tons more. So I want to talk to you guys about how you can grow an amazing fall garden and just some tips to help you get there. First tip, no more shade cloth. We're done, guys. We're done with the shade cloth. We will see shade cloth again next summer. But for right now, we are going to enjoy our times without having to mess with the shade cloth. Now, the nice part about that is that, yes, we are still in the 90s here in Arizona. Our temperatures are at night are getting low. So you want to make sure you watch out for that and make sure you monitor those temperatures so that they don't get too low. But our temperatures during the day are still in the 90s. They're 95, 96 degrees. Now, why do we not need shade cloth anymore? More because a lot of times we're not hitting those 90 degree temperatures until later on in the afternoon by the time we hit 90 degrees the Sun isn't even in my garden anymore so I don't have to worry about the Sun beaming down on it also we're having a lot more cloudier days in the fall so since we don't have direct Sun at like 100 or 90 degrees then we're not really worried about it because those clouds are providing that basically that filter from the light. So basically your clouds are your shade cloth. So we're gonna take that shade cloth and we're gonna put it back into its bucket and we're not gonna worry about it. Okay guys, editing Tiffany here because I went to the uh, pillbox and got all of the seeds that you guys have sent in for the seed swap. And I was really, really just emotionally moved guys. There was so many people that sent in extra extra seeds, sent in stamps, sent in extra money for shipping out the seeds that go to the families. If you guys don't know our seed swaps, we ask anybody that wants to donate anything extra to send it in and then we put food packages together to families that are in need that then go out and they can make their own garden. They have a packet of about anywhere between 15 to 20 packs of seeds depending on what we have that they can be able to put a small space garden together and provide food for their family a lot of these families are in food deserts or just low-income families or just people in need people that have been hurt in wars that are veterans or that have lost family members or just in need so uh, it really really just warmed my heart to see that there were so many people that were willing to help because normally all of the funds majority of the funds that we get from our YouTube channel goes to shipping out these seed packets and paying for the shipping for that so knowing that shipping has now gotten so much more expensive it was so helpful to have you guys be able to either provide extra seeds to where then we're not buying extra seeds or even just providing stamps or a dollar or two extra just to be able to help me pay for shipping so I just wanted to put in this insert to say thank you guys so much and I am so grateful for you so now let's talk watering so I am no longer deep watering my garden I do a deep watering when I plant the actual like start or the seeds or something like that. But other than that, I just water my garden like normal. Just spend a couple minutes in each bed making sure that they get nice and moist, but you don't wanna oversaturate your garden. Right now, it's not drying out as much as it could and it did during the summer, so you don't need to overwater it. You don't wanna drown your seedlings and or your seeds. Also, if you have mulch, this is the time to mulch your garden that will help retain some of the water. Now for me personally, this will all depend on your garden and what you wanna do is just stick your finger down in the soil and if it is dry, then you wanna water it. If it is not dry, then you can even skip a day or two. And when we have some of our fall rains that really get in there and 
drenched your garden, I actually will skip a day or even two days depending on how the garden is, um, how the moisture level is in the soil. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is feeding your garden. So you're going to have a bunch of little seedlings, a bunch of little sprouts and all these little things coming up in your garden. And there is enough food for that seed once it, um, in the seed itself. So it doesn't need food right away. As soon as it sprouts, don't worry about like trying to douse it with fertilizers or anything like that. It is still fine. There's even food in the soil because we have all of these worm castings because we had red wiggler worms and we took care of them. So there's still a lot of food in the, the soil itself. What I like to do is when my plants start getting a bunch of true leaves, maybe like four or five, six leaves, then I start with my fish fertilizer. And I also like to use some Heart Garden Amendment, or Soil Amendment from High Creations. Now guys, this one, although I love it, it is very expensive. <laughs> so we do have a promo code for you guys, but it is very expensive. It is really nice and it does work really well and they have a whole line, including a fish fertilizer. But I also like this fish fertilizer too as well. It's a more affordable price. You can get in a big giant gallon and it lasts a long time. You don't want to have a fertilizer that is extremely high. Now, if you guys have things like um, miracle Grow or artificial fertilizers that are like a 10, 10, 20 or something ridiculous like that, yes, that you put that on your plant, it will grow giant and it will be huge and you'll have leaves the size of your head and all those crazy things, but it is going to destroy your soil. It is going to add way too much fertilizer to your soil. It's gonna be a synthetic fertilizer. The worms aren't gonna like it. The soil life isn't gonna like it. And long term, your garden is not gonna go grow great because you're not gonna have a nutrient dense soil. You'll have killed all the microbes. So therefore, you'll have to buy more soil. You'll have to keep using heavy fertilizers and you won't have something that is sustainable. So we don't need greens the size of our heads to have a good pot of southern greens we can use all the sweet nice tender ones and still have a big giant pot so tip number five i think i'm on <laughs> gross things that are going to give you quick gratification <laughs> so my quick gratification things are going to be my snowball turnips my french breakfast radishes and then also my bush beans. These things are gonna grow very quickly in your garden and they're gonna produce very quickly. A lot of times in our gardens for the, the winter and the fall, or the fall and the winter, we are gonna have a slower growing season. Yes, we have a long growing season, but things are gonna grow slowly. So it might take you a longer time to get those big onions, a longer time to get those big greens and those big heads of cabbages. They're gonna take some time. Your broccoli is gonna take some time. All of it's gonna take some time. So in the meantime, grow things that you can easily just come out to your garden and pluck. The nice part about the turnips and the radishes and even the green beans is you can succession succession plant those to where then you can be harvesting them every two weeks all fall all winter and going into the spring tip number six is going to be and this is for my all all of my small space gardeners especially but you can do it if you have a big farm or a big garden too as well is decide what you want to have your year supply of and look at your pantry if you guys watched my video a couple videos ago I talked about what is missing in my pantry what I wanted to can all those different things like that but this is where you really can cut on that grocery budget you can say okay what is our favorite vegetable let's grow a year supply of that my year supply that I'm gonna to attempt to grow are going to be at green beans I'm gonna plant green beans everywhere I'm gonna plant pole green beans so I get them on a nice big vine I'm gonna plant bush ones. I'm just going to plant green beans everywhere, guys. And that is going to be what I want to grow a year supply of. Also, collard greens. I had to have store-bought collard greens because I had a really big craving and I just wanted them and they were terrible. So I will not be planting, I will not be buying any collard greens. I am just going to plant collard greens everywhere. I have my brassica bed. I'm going to put them in pots. I'm going to put them everywhere where they can fit. And then I'm going to grow a year's supply of them for myself. Now, following along with that, tip number seven is going to be now's the time to plant your herbs, guys. 
Your herbs, you can be using them all fall, all winter, all spring, and then come the summertime before we get those blazing temps that are gonna burn them up, you can trim them all back and you can harvest them and dry them or preserve them however you want them and then have herbs all summer long. So this is a great time to also plant all of your herbs that you love and you want to have for all of your cooking because that's gonna save you money on not buying bottled seasoning and creating your own creations. Tip number eight is going to be to amend your beds, guys. This is the time to get them nice and full. Now, I like to also amend my beds with some garden thyme. It's an organic garden thyme, and it is a granular um, like fertilizer. So it's one that's going to be a slow release. So it's something that's going to, over the next couple of seasons, where we have fall, winter, and, and going into spring, it's gonna slowly feed my garden. So I like to put my garden thyme in my garden beds and then also in for my trees too as well. This is one of the times that I like to feed the trees. Now, you want to then layer on a good helping of compost. Give your worms something to eat, the microbial life in your garden something to uh, eat, and then that will then give your plants a lot of nutrients. So a good layer of compost on everything is going to be a godsend for you guys. And then if you have pots, use something that is a nice organic potting mix to then mix in with a little bit of compost and add that to your pots and you'll have an amazing, great growing season. Tip number nine is going to be to get your structures in early, guys. Now, these are gonna be needed later. These are hoop houses. We don't really need them right now. Sometimes we do, if it gets too warm, you're gonna to wanna to cover up these plants so then that way they don't attract insects and die. But get these in early because it will stink when you have a frost coming and you want to cover up your plants, but they're nice and huge and it's gonna be hard to put them in afterwards. Also plan out where you wanna put things like tomato cages that can hold those um, coverings for you too as well. Because during the cold weather, you're gonna to wanna to cover up all of your frost tender stuff. And then tip number 10 guys is going to be to plant some beauty. Give yourself a little bit of grace and plant yourself some flowers so that then you can have flowers to look at. And bonus tip, try to make some of those flowers medicinal. Give yourself something that you're gonna find beautiful and you're gonna wanna sit out in the beautiful weather with your cup of tea or hot cocoa or coffee and look at the beautiful flowers. The bees are gonna be excited about it, but then at the end, you can also harvest those flowers and use them for a medicinal purpose. One of those flowers that I am focusing on in my garden is calendula. I am planting calendula in where you guys saw it, where the pumpkins are, and then also one of my Dollar Tree towers is gonna be full of calendula because I am going to make later on a hair and skin oil. So one hair oil, one skin oil. So if you guys want to uh, see how that process goes, make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned and watch the calendula grow, watch it be beautiful, and then also watch me do something magical with it that's gonna help our skin and our hair as we go into the spring. So I hope that these tips help you guys out i hope that you guys are growing amazing beautiful fall gardens and planting everything plant all the seeds even if you don't think it's going to grow plant it and if you guys have any tips that i didn't mention that help you in your garden leave a comment down below and help someone else in their garden but until next time grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food bye guys